Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm sitting in front of a Grotrian Steinweg 200 grand piano. This piano is absolutely unique, I would say in the whole world, and I will tell you why soon. And I will also tell you some details about Steinweg, Steinway, what's the difference, what's the history. But first, let's have a quick look to this crotchet and you will instantly see what I mean with this breathtaking job. more colorful than any crotchet you will find uh, of this age but first let's talk about Steinweg and Steinway so Steinway was founded 1853 by Henry Steinway and uh, Henry Steinway he came from Germany and his name was Henry Heinrich Steinweg originally so when he came to America, he changed his name to Steinway and then he founded this company there, but, but, uh, but uh, was very successful. If you want to learn more about the history of Steinway, I recommend you this book from uh, Richard Lieberman, uh, uh, Steinway and Sons. It's quite uh, <laughs> thick. Uh, it is just about uh, from the beginning of the uh, Henry Steinway to uh, almost today and uh, he talks about the history of the family and the interesting thing is to see the up and downs of this company. It really was they were very rich and they were almost bankrupt and they were rich. They had problems in the war with the workers, with the as you see, it's not easy to run a company this long time. But finally, they were successful because of the quality of the products. Here um, you see the founder of Steinway, Henry Steinway. It's quite a small name from Germany. So, what about Steinweg? So, a son of Henry Steinway was called Theodor Steinway. Or Theodor Steinweg, uh, he had a company in Germany. His son had a company in Germany. Uh, um, <clears throat> when uh, Heinrich Steinweg died, when his father died, his son went to America to support the company and he became technical leader. And so he sold his company uh, in Germany and uh, to Mr. Grotian and the, um, and others and uh, then the company was called Grotrian Steinweg first they called it Grotrian Theodor Herkri Schultz something but basically Grotrian Steinweg and they just you could say continue to to build uh, quite similar pianos for about uh, 30 years uh, this was 1865 when uh, uh, Steinweg was sold and then uh, <clears throat> when uh, after some years they had some uh, ju judicial differences about the name uh, perhaps we can show it we can see this here so this is father Theo Henry Steinway this is his son Theodore who was in charge of Steinweg and uh, then they they went different ways. Uh, Steinway made some innovations, some patents, uh, which of course Steinweg didn't have. They could not follow. And uh, 
as I told you in the earlier video, the most important patent of Steinway is the duplex scaling. They invented 1872. And uh, so from this point on, uh, they went in different ways. The Steinway pianos started to have another sound. Um, I just show you this patent. So uh, here we have the original patent from May 14, 1872. I hope you can see it a little bit. And um, here we have the front duplex and the back duplex. And as I told you, this is the string that sounds. And here and here we also have a string part that vibrates in a defined length. Um, the first patent, they had many octaves. You see? And this was the so-called centennial concert grand piano. Uh, but they changed later on these correlations and uh, I measured some uh, different models for me, the 8, 180, the 170, the B uh, and uh, then I thought what would happen if we if I take this Steinway patent and I build it into a Procreon Steinway. Will it sound like a Steinway? Will it come to this or will it have the different sound? And that's what I did here. And the result is it has a different sound, but it has the same power and dynamic as a Steinway, I would say. But the color of the tone is a little bit to the... Yeah, I can't describe. <laughs> Just listen to it. Um, to build it here, I had to, to measure the string, the sound and string length, of it, and then to calculate uh, these uh, parts uh, corresponding to the symmetry. Of course, it has to be quite um, exact. Uh, it's better to, to have a shorter, uh, to get higher than deeper. So I tried to measure exactly and then go a little bit up. Uh, and also the, the scaling is not totally exact, it's a little bit like this, you know, the strings are not all exactly the same. So you have a little bit of this effect like the, on the organ and the upper registers, this little bit out of tune that makes this more brilliant. So it's almost better not to have the perfect uh, tone perhaps it will also be too sharp then so I'm very satisfied with this uh, result of course the old piano was rebuilt uh, as often on Grochen you have problem with sound bearing and it's uh, because I think it's because of the construction of these frames because they don't have any support here they have just support on the edge and then uh, also the the case is on the underneath it's like a star like this so i think the piano doesn't uh, withstand the tension so good so they often have to be re re um, crowned uh, but now i think we have perfect result and we're really happy uh, with the new strings also, the strings are got the original scaling. It's uh, they're norm normal strings, not the uh, modern special strings. Um, also, the pingo cupicat was absolutely perfect. Uh, so the hammers are voiced. So let's listen to this tiny week with a little bit special technique and. I really can tell you this amazing sound. 